What if the fantasy of trading places could turn into a deadly affair? Imagine a seemingly innocent wife swap fantasy, a game where two couples trade lives just for a taste of something different. At first, it's exciting, thrilling even, as roles and routines are appended. But what happens when someone takes the fantasy too far? Tune in as we unravel the chilling tale of desire turning sinister. Meet the key players whose lives intertwine in ways they never imagined, and witness how paradise can quickly become a prison. Stay with us as we dive into this dark mystery, where every detail unravels a new layer of obsession, intrigue, and a shocking twist no one could have foreseen. Are you ready to uncover the truth? Stick around, because what you're about to hear will have you questioning everything you thought you knew. The beginning of the swap involves two seemingly ordinary couples yearning for a change in their mundane lives. Picture this over a cozy dinner. The conversation pivots to unfulfilled desires and the allure of a new adventure. It was Claire who first voiced the fantasy, her eyes alight with curiosity and mischief. Her husband, Tom, hesitated, but she could see the intrigue in his eyes. Across town, we find Sarah and Mike, a couple battling routine and monotony. When Claire casually mentioned the idea to Sarah during a lunch outing, it planted a seed of curiosity. Sarah, ever the adventurous spirit, found the prospect thrilling. Mike, though initially skeptical, was nudged by Sarah's infectious enthusiasm. The idea began as a daring experiment, a break from the routines that seemed to cage them. For Claire and Tom, it was about rekindling excitement, a way to step outside the ordinary and explore their identities within different dynamics. For Sarah and Mike, the swap promised a fresh perspective on life and love, a chance to rediscover themselves. As the discussions turned into a plan, anticipation mixed with trepidation. How would this shape their relationships? Could they navigate the complexities of trading places, both physically and emotionally? They convinced themselves it was just a game, a harmless escapade. But as they stood on the brink of this adventure, little did they know that the steps they were about to take would lead them into a world where fantasies blur into reality, challenging everything they held dear. The initial enthusiasm was palpable, a vibrant energy crackling in the air as Claire and Tom, alongside Sarah and Mike, embarked on what they believed was a simple adventure to invigorate their lives. The allure of the wife swap fantasy was intoxicating, promising a burst of novelty that they desperately craved. Both couples envisioned the potential benefits, each with their own set of hopes and dreams. For Claire and Tom, the swap was a chance to breathe life into their marriage, to reignite the spark that had dimmed over the years. They imagined it as an opportunity to gain fresh insights, to see each other through new eyes, and perhaps to discover hidden facets of themselves. Tom, though initially apprehensive, could not deny the excitement building within him, spurred on by Claire's enthusiasm. Across town, Sarah and Mike viewed the swap as a gateway to rediscovering passion and spontaneity. Sarah, with her adventurous heart, was eager to dive into this new experience, believing it could teach them valuable lessons about love and commitment. Mike, persuaded by Sarah's zest for life, began to see the swap as more than just a break from routine, but as a journey that could strengthen their bond. As plans materialized, they chatted eagerly about the possibilities, laughter echoing in living rooms late into the night. The swap promised to be a crucible for transformation, yet beneath the surface of anticipation, lay unattended risks. As they stood on the precipice of change, 
buoyed by dreams of newfound freedom and understanding. None foresaw the shadows lurking beneath their fantasies, poised to turn their expectations into a labyrinth of unforeseen challenges. The unexpected tensions began to surface like hairline fractures in a seemingly flawless structure. The initial thrill of the swap slowly gave way to subtle yet unmistakable strains. Claire, usually so composed, began noticing moments of irritation creeping into her interactions with Mike. She had anticipated excitement, but not the pangs of jealousy that prickled beneath her skin when she saw Sarah and Tom laughing together, their connection appearing effortless and unforced. It was as if a mirror had been held up, reflecting her own insecurities back at her. Across the city, Sarah felt an unfamiliar tightness in her chest. She noticed how Claire and Mike, while polite, started to share lingering glances and private smiles. It sparked within her an unexpected possessiveness, a feeling she'd never associated with the easygoing Claire. The fantasy that was meant to liberate them had instead begun to expose the cracks they had never noticed before. Tom, who had entered this arrangement with the promise of discovery, found himself ensnared in the web of complex emotions he couldn't quite articulate. The blurring of boundaries became all too real as he struggled with feelings of inadequacy. Watching his wife grow more distant, her attention seemingly captivated by another man. For Mike, the dynamic shift was equally jarring. He realized with a start that the familiarity he had taken for granted was eroding, replaced by an unsettling uncertainty. The tension simmered just below the surface, each couple wrestling with the ghosts of old grievances and newfound distrust. It was as though the fantasy had lit a fuse, edging them towards explosive confrontations they had never anticipated. In their quest to explore unknown territories, they had opened doors to deeper, darker chambers of their relationships, leading them down a path fraught with unexpected challenges. As they navigated this precarious terrain, they began to sense the tightening grip of a situation slipping beyond their control hinting at the sinister forces waiting to be unleashed from the shadows of their seemingly innocuous indulgence. It was only the beginning, yet it laid bare the truth that their cherished illusion of control was nothing more than a fragile facade, teetering on the precipice of chaos. The intruder in this tangled tale is Jack, a figure previously on the periphery whose entrance was as unnoticed as a shadow slipping through a room at twilight. Jack was a co-worker of Tom's, a quiet presence in the background at company gatherings and casual meetups. He was the guy who always seemed to be present, but never quite involved, watching with an intensity that went unnoticed amidst the laughter and clinking glasses. His fascination with Claire began innocently enough, rooted in admiration and the occasional shared joke at office parties. Yet as the swap took shape, his interest morphed into a fixation, each encounter with Claire igniting a spark that he couldn't quite extinguish. Jack's life was marked by a series of unfulfilled aspirations and a longing for connection. He was single, often describing himself as married to his job, but beneath his composed exterior lay an unspoken loneliness that fed his growing obsession. Observing Claire and Tom from the sidelines, he harbored a silent envy for their seemingly perfect life, fueling a desire to taste a world that was not his own. Jack's movements were calculated, deliberate, a casual question about the swap, a passing comment that hinted at his interest, all masked by a friendly facade. He slowly embedded himself into their lives, attending more social gatherings 
and offering a sympathetic ear when tensions arose. It was as though he was threading himself into the fabric of their world, one stitch at a time. The subtleties of his actions were cloaked in normalcy, so much so that even Claire, sharp-eyed and intuitive, did not see the growing darkness behind his cordial demeanor. It wasn't until the phone calls became more frequent, the visits more persistent, that the unsettling undertones of his fixation began to emerge. The suspense was slowly building, a creeping unease that none of the couples could pinpoint as Jack's presence became less of a shadow and more of an encroaching storm. As we delve deeper into Jack's past, we uncover a history of infatuations that eerily mirror the current path he treads. His obsession with Claire was not the first, but it felt different, more consuming, driven by the intoxicating blend of fantasy and reality that the swap had spun. Unbeknownst to the four entangled in their own spiraling emotions, Jack's fascination was brewing, threatening to blur the boundaries between admiration and obsession, pulling him closer toward a line that once crossed could never be redrawn. As we navigate this labyrinth of unspoken desires and hidden intentions, the question remains, how far would Jack go to transform his fantasy into reality, and what price would be paid in the process? The escalation of Jack's obsession was insidious, weaving itself into the tapestry of ordinary life with a stealth that escaped detection. At first, his fascination with Claire seemed harmless, the kind of interest one might casually observe in a friend or colleague. Yet beneath the surface, it was brewing into something far more intense. Jack began to make subtle changes in his routine aligning himself with the fragments of Claire and Tom's life. He lingered longer after work, finding reasons to stay behind when others had left, hoping for a chance encounter with Claire during her occasional visits to the office. It started with trivial gestures, like bringing her favorite coffee just the way she liked it, citing it as a mere coincidence a coincidence repeated often enough to become a habit that went unchallenged. Claire, busy with the complexities of her own life, overlooked the signs. She dismissed his attentions as friendly overtures, not quite seeing the depth of emotion hidden behind his polite smile. For Jack, each unguarded moment with Claire was a victory, an affirmation of the connection he was convinced existed between them. The red flags appeared as whispers in the backdrop of their lives. Jack's social media accounts began to tell a story of closeness that did not exist. Posts that tagged himself in places Claire frequented, crafting a digital narrative that entwined their worlds. And then there were the gifts, small tokens left at her desk, unsigned but unmistakably from him. Claire found them flattering at first, a distraction in the midst of her emotional turmoil, until the frequency began to unsettle her. Still, she shrugged it off with a nervous laugh, attributing it to nothing more than an overzealous admirer. Meanwhile, Jack's presence grew more invasive, like ivy creeping silently up a wall working its way into the foundation. He managed to learn more about Claire's life outside the office, the books she loved, the music she listened to, feeding his obsession with every detail. He began to show up at events he knew she would attend, always on the periphery, blending into the crowd, yet always watching, his eyes never straying far from her. The progression was subtle, a transformation unfolding in plain view, yet unnoticed. Claire's world had become his, a playground for his fantasies masquerading as reality. As the boundaries between admiration and obsession blurred, Jack's grip on sanity began to waver, driven by an insatiable need 
to possess what he had long desired. He saw the cracks in Claire's life, the tensions induced by the swap she had embarked on, and like a wolf eyeing its prey, he bided his time, waiting for the perfect moment to step from the shadows and claim what he believed was rightfully his. Among the couples, discussions continued, unaware of the growing storm. Claire, preoccupied with her own doubts and insecurities, failed to see the danger lurking in Jack's unwavering gaze. To the outside world, he was nothing more than a persistent friend, overshadowed by the chaos of the swap's unraveling dynamics. But to Jack, each red flag dismissed was a step closer to the moment he had been waiting for, when his fantasies would no longer be confined to dreams, but would spill into reality with consequences more deadly than any of them could have anticipated. The stage was set, the players ignorant of their roles in Jack's twisted script. As we delve further into this dark tale, the true extent of his obsession is revealed, leaving us to ponder how much longer it will be until Jack's carefully constructed facade crumbles, laying bare the full scope of his sinister intentions. Breaking trust is a subtle art, a gradual chipping away at the foundation of relationships, often beginning with the smallest of actions. It was during one of those innocuous moments, a casual evening gathering at Sarah and Mike's, that the first real fishers emerged. They were all there, trying to keep things light and joyful, despite the undercurrents of unease swirling among them. Claire, in a moment of vulnerability, confided in Mike about her growing concerns over the swap. While Tom listened from the kitchen, the murmur of their conversation barely audible over the music. It seemed innocent enough, but the intimacy of her words lingered in Mike's mind long after the evening ended. Tom, keeping his distance, felt the sting of exclusion, a doubt festering inside him, like a wound slowly bleeding trust. Meanwhile, in another part of town, Sarah and Tom shared a moment that twisted the knife further. It was a fleeting interaction, just a friendly touch on the shoulder as they parted ways after a yoga class. But for Sarah, it was electrifying. Her heart skipped a beat, and she wondered if it was her longing for excitement or something far deeper. Tom, caught in the throes of his own doubts, didn't notice the shift in her demeanor, but Claire did. She noticed everything, from the way Sarah's eyes lingered on Tom a moment too long, to the way Mike seemed preoccupied with thoughts he didn't share. Every glance, every silence hung heavier, casting shadows that loomed larger with each passing day. The once close-knit foursome started keeping secrets, and with each secret kept, their bonds began to unravel. In this tangled web of emotions, Jack's presence became more than just a background detail. He was the silent orchestrator, pulling the strings without so much as a word. His friendship with Tom suddenly seemed more like a calculated move, a wedge driven deeper with every conversation they shared. Jack's casual mentions of Claire, the offhand remarks about her quirks and habits that only an intimate observer might know, struck a chord of discord that resonated far louder than anyone anticipated. For Claire, the breach came in the form of a chance discovery, a misplaced phone left unlocked, revealing messages between Sarah and Tom, conversations that were harmless in isolation, but insidiously suggestive when pieced together with the moments she'd witnessed. It was as though a curtain had been pulled back revealing layers of trust threadbare and worn. Mike, on the other hand, found his doubts confirmed in Sarah's growing detachment, echoing in their quiet home where laughter once resided. The breaking point came at an informal dinner, a night meant to mend the rifts now glaringly evident. In an attempt to address the burgeoning tension, 
Claire cleared her throat to speak, but her voice was drowned out by the weight of unsaid words. Sarah, unable to contain her frustration, let slip accusations veiled in sarcasm, exposing wounds that had yet to heal. The atmosphere turned icy, and the fragile fabric of their trust was undeniable, frayed. As they argued, a cold realization settled on the room. The swap that was meant to invigorate their lives had instead thrown them into a spiral of distrust and uncertainty. The blurring of boundaries, once anticipated with eagerness, now felt like a chasm impossible to cross. And through it all, Jack watched, his eyes alight with a mix of vindication and anticipation, knowing he had set the stage perfectly. The trust that had tethered them was now a fragile thread, poised to break with the slightest tug, and with it, their world as they knew it. The question lingered unspoken. Could they find a way back from this precipice, or was it already too late to salvage the shattered remnants of what once was? The turning point emerges in the quiet hours of a Friday evening. It begins innocuously enough, as these things often do. The couples decide to meet at Sarah and Mike's house, hoping to smooth over the last awkward dinner with a weekend getaway planning session. Laughter is tentative, conversations are strained but civil, as they navigate the tensions still swirling in the room. But the air is heavy, as if thick with a storm only they can feel approaching. It is during this evening that an unexpected visitor arrives. A manila envelope slides quietly under the front door. No one notices it at first, too engrossed in their small talk and discussions of potential travel destinations. It's only when Sarah gets up to fetch more wine that she finds it lying innocuously on the doormat, a silent harbinger of the chaos to come. The envelope is addressed to Claire in neat, almost meticulous handwriting. The atmosphere shifts palpably as she picks it up, curiosity mingling with a nagging sense of unease. As she tears open the seal, the room holds its breath. Inside, they find a series of photographs, candid shots of Claire and Tom engaging with Sarah and Mike, and also shockingly, images capturing intimate moments none of them recall experiencing, as if their lives were caught in a tabloid drama. There's a note, just a few lines, but it feels like a thunderclap in the sudden silence. It reads, to see what you can no longer hide, signed simply with the letter J. The room erupts in questions, accusations flying unchecked as paranoia takes hold. As if a dam has broken, the buried tensions resurface with a vengeance, voices rising to a cacophony that threatens to drown out reason. Claire's hands shake as she examines the photos, her mind racing to make sense of the betrayal implied. Tom, bewildered, tries to piece together how someone could have captured these images, scenes that seemed both familiar and foreign. Mike is visibly shaken, using anger as a shield against the vulnerability of shattered trust. Sarah, usually the peacemaker, finds herself at a loss for words, her mind echoing with doubts about each whisper and shared glance she'd dismissed. The sense of violation is immediate and profound, their privacy pierced by the camera lens that has turned their lives into an unending reel of suspicion and deceit. As the evening descends into chaos, it becomes clear that the fantasy of their experiment has slipped into a nightmare they never anticipated. Each couple must grapple with the unveiling of secrets they didn't know existed, forcing a reckoning with the reality that their lives will never be the same. In the midst of this turmoil, the true extent of Jack's manipulation begins to dawn. His seemingly innocent friendship slipped into their lives like an unnoticed thread, and now, with one calculated move, 
he's pulled them all into a tangled web of deception and doubt. As the dust settles and the night creeps on, the couples are left in a fragile silence, each haunted by the spectre of a trust that was never as solid as they believed. They are now forced to confront the stark truth of their reality, with the ominous knowledge that the nightmare has only just begun. The turning point has been reached, the fragile illusion shattered, and the question remains, can they navigate this treacherous landscape and emerge unscathed? Or will the forces now set in motion unravel the very fabric of their lives? The descent into madness begins with Jack's mind, once clear and focused, now echoing with an unrelenting cacophony of intrusive thoughts. It is a slow erosion, like a shoreline battered by endless waves, each incident chipping away at the stability he once held. The photographs, meticulously collected, were not just evidence of his obsession, but also a reflection of the distorted reality he has constructed. His fixation on Claire evolves from mere admiration to a consuming delusion, a narrative in which she is the inevitable heroine drawn to him by fate. Jack's actions become more erratic and calculated, as though a puppeteer pulling strings in a play only he can see. He starts spending sleepless nights tracing intricate plans on his walls, each thread a connection that ties Claire to him in a world no one else understands. An old calendar becomes his guide, marked with their every interaction, every glance that fuels his fantasies of shared destiny. As he spirals further, reality and imagination blur into a dangerous continuum. The boundary between fantasy and actuality begins to vanish, and Jack's sense of identity becomes perilously entwined with his skewed vision of love. He starts to believe that only he can provide Claire the happiness she deserves, convinced that her current life is a prison from which only he can free her. The danger he poses starts to manifest in subtle yet sinister ways. A sudden power outage at Claire's home coincides with Jack's presence in the neighborhood, his shadowy figure lingering just out of sight, orchestrating events like a maestro orchestrating a symphony. He leaves messages in unusual places, riddles tailored to capture Claire's attention and pull her deeper into his world. Each step he takes, each calculated gesture, is a further plunge into an abyss from which he cannot return. His obsession grows bolder as he seeks to dismantle the barriers between them, deluded by whispers of meant to be that have taken root in the fertile ground of his madness. The transformation is complete when Jack begins to view those around Claire as obstacles to their destined connection. Anyone who threatens his vision becomes a target in his mind. The once harmless colleague has been replaced by a figure of menace, one that lurks at the edges of their lives, ready to strike at the heart of their fragile bonds. The stage is set for a confrontation none of them anticipated, a climax drawn inexorably by the pull of madness unraveling in the shadows. Jack's spiraling descent into obsession poses an unspoken threat, a storm gathering strength as it advances toward its inevitable collision with reality. How far he will go to claim what he believes is rightfully, his remains to be seen, but the growing danger he represents casts a foreboding shadow over the lives intertwined in this dark narrative. As the unraveling continues, the question remains, can the couples recognize the threat before it's too late, or will they be caught in the undertow of Jack's twisted obsession, dragged into a darkness from which they cannot escape? The first crime involves an act so unassuming in its initial unfolding that it almost slips beneath notice, masked by the chaos 
already brewing within the lives of Claire, Tom, Sarah, and Mike. It unfolds one cool autumn evening inside a dimly lit room where shadows play upon the walls like silent witnesses to an impending storm. This is where Jack, consumed by his fixation, takes his first calculated step into darkness. Motivated by a delusional sense of righteousness, he sets his plan into motion, targeting the very foundation of Claire's world. It begins with a calculated act of vandalism small, seemingly insignificant, yet devastating in its ripple effects. Under the cover of night, Jack defaces Tom's prized car, a symbol of his stability and success, leaving messages etched into the paint that suggest a betrayal too close for comfort. This act, violent in its intention, serves as Jack's twisted attempt to corrode Tom's sense of security and control, planting seeds of doubt and paranoia that threaten to unravel the fragile web of trust holding Claire and Tom together. The next morning, as Tom discovers the damage, Claire watches the shock and disbelief wash over him. The words cut deeper than the metal, surfacing buried insecurities and igniting tensions that had long simmered beneath their composed exterior. It is a harbinger, a silent declaration that the shadows of their fantasy have spilled into reality. Meanwhile, Jack observes from a distance an unseen puppet master pulling strings that none of them can see. The consequences of his actions begin to weave through the lives he's meticulously studied, causing rifts that grow wider each day. Sarah and Mike, already strained by the emotional turmoil of the swap, find themselves ensnared in the fallout. Tom's paranoia spreads like wildfire, questioning every interaction, every glance he once dismissed as harmless. The couples, now tangled in Jack's web, are drawn into a spiral of suspicion and fear that blinds them to the real danger lurking just beyond their understanding. This initial crime, though cloaked in subtlety, sets the stage for the more sinister events to follow. It is a catalyst, a taste of the chaos Jack is willing to unleash in the name of his infatuation. As the tension thickens and trust erodes, the questions loom. Who could do such a thing? Why target them? In their search for answers, they remain oblivious to the true puppet master waiting in the wings, his motives as murky as the night he conceals himself within. The facade of normalcy is slipping, and as it does, their lives teeter on the edge of a conflict more perilous than they ever imagined. Jack's actions are not merely acts of vandalism. They are a declaration of intent, the first in a series of manipulations that will challenge their perceptions and push the boundaries of their endurance. The true nature of his obsession is yet to be fully revealed, but its shadow stretches long, hinting at a darkness that is only beginning to unfurl. As the couples grapple with the fallout, unaware of the storm clouds gathering above, the path has been set for the harrowing journey that lies ahead, one where each step may lead them deeper into a labyrinth of deceit and danger they could never have anticipated. The murder unfolds on a night swallowed by an unsettling quiet, the world seeming to hold its breath in anticipation of the tragedy about to unfurl. The victim, whose life is soon to be irrevocably altered, is Claire. Her unsuspecting steps echo through the dimly lit parking lot as she makes her way to the car, the air carrying a chill that pricks at her skin. She is alone, the solitude dictated by a last-minute errand run, the kind of routine task that should have been uneventful, ordinary. But ordinary things have a way of changing course when obsession lurks in the shadows. Jack has watches, unblinking, from the cover of night, driven by a fevered fantasy that has long since escaped the bounds of reason. 
To him, Claire is more than just an object of desire. She's become a symbol of everything he believes he cannot live without. His heart pounds as he watches her, a kind of calm flooding over him, for in his distorted view, this moment is destiny fulfilled. As Claire approaches her car, she senses a shift in the air. It's a fleeting instinct, a whisper of danger that sends her heart racing though her mind struggles to piece together why. She does not see Jack emerge from the shadows, his footsteps silent and deliberate, each one bringing him closer to a reality he has constructed in his mind. The execution of the crime is swift, a momentary rupture of silence as Jack closes the distance. Claire turns, a hesitant smile beginning to form as she recognizes him an instinctive greeting on her lips. But it's too late. The knife flashes in the dim light, a glint of metal that cuts through the night as cleanly as it cuts through hope. The realization is instant, the betrayal cutting deeper than the physical pain as Claire hits the ground, a gasp escaping her lips. The immediate aftermath is a blur of motion and sound, a cacophony of panic and disbelief. Jack stands frozen, the world spinning away from him as if mocking the clarity he thought he had gained. The weight of what he has done crashes over him, a tidal wave of remorse and horror that breaks through the veil of his obsession. In the distance, a siren wails, an eerie reminder of civilization's approach, yet too late to mend the unraveling threads of a life severed. The scene becomes a tableau of chaos, red and blue lights casting frantic shadows across unyielding pavement. Voices rise, shouts mingle with sobs, a chorus of humanity rallying against the senseless violence that has shattered their night. Within moments, the parking lot becomes a hive of activity, uniformed officers moving swiftly, their practiced efficiency a stark contrast to the emotional wreckage surrounding them. Claire lies motionless, the stillness of her form belying the turmoil within. As responders work to cordon off the scene, they are unaware of the silent witness lurking just beyond the circle of light. Jack's presence, once so commanding, has dissolved into the fabric of darkness, retreating from the consequence that he can no longer avert. As he fades into obscurity, the gravity of his actions echoes louder than words ever could, leaving the night irreparably changed. The community reels from the impact of the crime, a ripple of shock spreading outward as Claire's name becomes a rallying cry for justice. More than just a victim, she is a symbol of innocence lost, her story one that intertwines with the darker threads of obsession that have woven this tale. The questions loom large. How did it come to this? And could anyone have foreseen the depths of Jack's descent into madness? As the dust settles on the immediate tragedy, the world moves forward, yet those intimately involved find themselves trapped in a loop of what ifs and why nots. In the end, the murder becomes more than a singular act of violence. It's a catalyst, igniting a quest for truth in a narrative where reality has too often blurred with fantasy, and the costs of ignoring the signs prove devastatingly high. The investigation into Claire's murder begins with the hushed urgency of midnight whispers, as detectives and forensic teams descend upon the scene piecing together the final hours leading to her untimely death. The parking lot is cordoned off, swarming with officers who meticulously comb through the evidence, each movement purposeful, every discovery a new fragment to fit into the puzzle. As dawn breaks, the investigation shifts to the lives intricately bound by this tragedy. Detectives visit the homes of Sarah, Mike, and Tom, their questions probing deeper with each visit, unraveling the complex tapestry of relationships that Claire was an essential thread in. 
The initial shock gives way to a grueling search for clarity, a quest to untangle the knotted web of secrets and deceptions that swirled around the fateful swap. Interviews reveal the strain beneath the surface, tensions that had long simmered unnoticed now spilling into view. Sarah, Mike, and Tom, each haunted by their own fears and suspicions, find themselves under scrutiny, their every word dissected for intent and motive. As the investigation peels back layers of their intertwined lives, hidden truths begin to emerge. Claire and Tom's marriage, once a beacon of stability, is re-examined under the harsh glare of police interrogation, exposing fractures that were visible only to those willing to see. The swap had been a desperate attempt to rekindle what was slowly fading, but the intrusion of Jack, whose presence had woven itself subtly into their lives, had unknowingly driven a wedge further between them. In parallel, the detectives pieced together Jack's background, uncovering a history of infatuations that hint at a dangerous pattern, each more consuming than the last. The revelation of his calculated attempts to integrate himself into Claire and Tom's world paints a chilling portrait of a man teetering on the edge of obsession and control. As the investigation digs deeper, the image of Jack as merely a quiet colleague vanishes, replaced by the more sinister figure of a stalker who meticulously orchestrated his actions. Meanwhile, Sarah and Mike grapple with their own revelations. The realization that their openness to the swap may have unwittingly set the stage for the tragedy that unfolded. Tensions between them intensify, fueled by guilt and self-recrimination. Each question from detectives, a reminder of the truths they wish to forget. The pressure mounts as detectives press forward, their focus shifting to uncovering the events leading up to that fateful night. A breakthrough comes with the discovery of Jack's collected paraphernalia, evidence of his fixation meticulously catalogued, photographs, notes, and a timeline of interactions that laid bare the chilling extent of his intentions. This shocking revelation provides the impetus needed to piece together the chain of events that culminated in the parking lot. The detectives reconstruct the night of the murder with painstaking detail, the timeline forming a clear picture of Jack's descent, driven by the blurring of fantasy and reality. As the investigation reaches its crescendo, the truth stands stark. Jack's obsession, unchecked and unnoticed, festered into a madness that ultimately claimed Claire's life. Her murder, a tragic convergence of miscommunication, secrecy and delusion within a world where boundaries became lost, remains a grim reminder of the dangers of unexamined desires. With the investigation's conclusion comes a semblance of closure, but for those left in the wake of Claire's death, the path forward is uncertain. The weight of lost trust and shattered illusions hangs heavy, each step haunted by the knowledge of what was uncovered and what was lost along the way. As the community rallies to support those affected, they are left to pick up the pieces, forever changed by the revelations brought to light in the wake of unimaginable tragedy. The story serves as a stark reminder of the thin line between reality and obsession and the unforeseen consequences of crossing it. The capture of the perpetrator unfolds with a relentless pursuit that showcases the tenacity and expertise of law enforcement. As the investigation into Claire's murder progresses, the trail leads ever closer to Jack, whose carefully constructed facade begins to crumble under the weight of mounting evidence. Detectives, driven by the urgency of justice, meticulously gather every clue, each piece of evidence a stepping stone toward capturing the man who slipped through the shadows. 
Jack's psychological unraveling becomes apparent as he struggles to maintain the illusion of innocence amidst the tightening net. He is constantly on the move, aware that the walls are closing in, forcing him into a game of cat and mouse with law enforcement. The detectives, acutely aware of his tendencies, set up a web of surveillance, tracking his movements with precision. Jack, once meticulous and calculated, now makes careless mistakes, driven by desperation and paranoia. The pursuit reaches its crescendo one evening, as detectives finally piece together his location through a series of digital breadcrumbs inadvertently left behind. They move swiftly, coordinating with units across the city, determined not to let their quarry slip away. The air is thick with anticipation as they converge on an unassuming location, every officer poised for the confrontation that's been building since Claire's murder. Jack, sensing the inevitable, attempts to evade capture with a frantic dash into the dense urban environment, weaving through alleys as patrol cars close in from all directions. The city becomes a labyrinth of echoing footsteps and blaring sirens, each turn narrowing his options, each sound a reminder of the inescapable force bearing down upon him. As Jack reaches a dead end, his path blocked by a chain-link fence, officers surround him, their voices firm yet offering a chance to surrender. The tension hangs heavy in the air, a single moment stretched into an eternity. Jack turns to face them, his eyes wild with a mix of defiance and resignation, understanding that his constructed reality has finally shattered. As the silence stretches, one detective steps forward, their voice calm yet authoritative, urging Jack to come peacefully. A brief charged pause follows, the culmination of months of investigation and the gravity of a life irreversibly altered. In that moment, something shifts within Jack. His flight response falters, replaced by a reluctant acceptance. He lowers his head, the fight leaving his body, and he slowly raises his hands in surrender. The handcuffs click into place, a sound of finality echoing through the evening air. As they escort him away, Jack murmurs the words of a confession, disjointed but filled with the realization of deeds done in the haze of obsession. The confession, captured on the record, adds a chilling closure to the case, an acknowledgement of the madness that gripped his life. For the detectives, the moment is bittersweet. Victory in the pursuit of justice comes mingled with the weight of what has been lost, but it is a testament to their unyielding dedication, their refusal to let the darkness go unchallenged. The community, now more secure, begins to heal, knowing that the perpetrator is no longer a threat. In the aftermath, the story of pursuit and capture becomes a somber chapter in the broader narrative, a reminder of the lengths to which law enforcement will go to protect the innocent and bring those in the shadows to light. As the dust settles on this dark episode, the captured echoes of Jack's confession serve as a stark warning of the dangers lurking in unchecked desires and the thin veneer separating fantasy from a haunting reality. The aftermath of Claire's murder leaves a ripple effect that extends far beyond the immediate circle of those involved, seeping into the lives of her family, friends, and an entire community now burdened with the weight of tragedy. As the reality of her death settles in, the survivors are left to grapple with the traumatic shockwaves of a world shattered by violence. For Tom, the loss is not just of a partner, but of the life they had built together, now fractured by memories steeped in pain and regret. His days become a haze of what ifs and why nots, each moment tinged with the haunting absence of Claire's presence. The home they shared feels hollow, 
echoing with the silence of conversations cut short and dreams unrealized. Across town, Sarah and Mike find themselves re-evaluating the decisions that led them to the fateful swap, questioning their once unshakable belief in open exploration and the unforeseen consequences it engendered. The experience leaves a scar, a reminder of the fragility hidden within their pursuit of novelty, their relationship strained by the weight of self-recrimination undergoes a re-examination as they navigate the path to healing, a journey marked by newfound caution and introspection. The community, once vibrant and untroubled, now moves with a subdued air, the murder casting a long shadow that touches every corner. Neighbors and colleagues exchange glances, filled with unspoken understanding, united by the shared grief for a life cut short and the sobering reminder of the vulnerabilities lurking within their own lives. Conversations around safety and trust become more urgent, spurring dialogue about the hidden dangers that can infiltrate even the most secure environments. Public gatherings transform into forums for healing, spaces where stories are shared and resilience is fostered. Within this collective mourning, emerges a community resolute in its determination to prevent a recurrence, striving to transform the sorrow into action and awareness. Meanwhile, the impact of Jack's actions reverberates like an insidious echo, challenging the surviving individuals to confront the uncomfortable truths of obsession and the thin veneer separating reality from delusion. Those who knew Jack are left to reconcile the image of a quiet colleague with the dark figure responsible for such devastation. Revelations about his deceptive facade force an uncomfortable reckoning with the notion of hidden depths within people once considered familiar. Law enforcement, too, feels the weight of the case, their pursuit and capture of Jack becoming a poignant testament to the relentless fight against the forces of darkness that, when left unchecked, can yield unimaginable pain. They stand as a bulwark against future tragedies, their work a reminder of the delicate balance between vigilance and compassion. For those left in the wake of this tragedy, moving forward requires strength and support, an understanding that healing is a process punctuated by moments of reflection and resolve. The story of Claire's life and its abrupt ending becomes a narrative woven into the fabric of their lives, a reminder of the enduring strength within a community bound by shared sorrow and the promise of hope emerging from grief's shadow. As the days stretch into months, the impact of this story becomes clear, a reminder of the inherent unpredictability of life and the perseverance required to find light amidst darkness, ensuring that Claire's memory serves as a beacon for resilience and the unyielding pursuit of justice in a world where both fantasy and reality intertwine with profound consequences. In summary, the chilling saga of a seemingly innocent wife swap spiraling into a deadly obsession leaves us with profound questions about the nature of trust, the seductive pull of fantasy and the destructive power of unchecked desires. What started as a quest for excitement turned into a nightmare, unraveling lives with unforeseen consequences. Claire's tragic death serves as a stark reminder of how blurred boundaries can lead to unforeseen peril. The couple's experiment meant to enhance their relationships instead exposed hidden vulnerabilities and insecurities setting off a chain reaction that no one anticipated. Jack's fixation, masked by a facade of normalcy, illustrates how easily admiration can tip into obsession in the shadows of unspoken desires. This story compels us to contemplate the fragile line that separates reality from fantasy and the dangers that lie in unexamined emotions. 
As we reflect on these events, we're reminded of the importance of vigilance in relationships and the need to recognize red flags before they manifest into dark realities. Thank you for joining us in uncovering this dark bedtime story. If you found this exploration intriguing, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell to stay updated on more mysteries and true crime tales. Your engagement helps us continue to bring these haunting stories